right? So if you're just sleeping there, your body is going to burn calories to keep you alive, to keep you breathing, right? That's a part of your calories out. Neat, non-exercise activity, thermogenesis. This is me doing this. That is a part of neat. I'm using energy to do this. My body is burning calories, right? TEF, thermic effect of feeding. This is the digesting load. When we're digesting food, we are burning calories. And then last is exercise expenditure. So, right? So exercise activity, thermogenesis or EAT, E-A-T. These are the calories that we burn during exercise. Now, when someone starts to consume calories that are low, one of these things can happen. Number one, they automatically start to move less. This is your body's response, right? It's because it's thinking, yeah, you know, she's taking in less, so I'm spontaneously going to start moving less. So without you realizing, you start to move less. We've seen this in research, right? People start to move less. Now, what happens is your calories out, that expenditure is reduced, right? This essentially means you're not creating a bigger deficit as you thought you were. This is all that's happening. So it's not like you have these extra calories and your body is holding on to them because you're not eating a lot. No, it's purely because your behaviors start to change, purely because of how you've changed your calories. And remember, this equation is dynamic. It is not a static equation. Once you change that in, it will impact the out one way or the other, right? So you start to unconsciously move less. That's one. Number two, if you're exercising, the intensity of your workouts will start to reduce. You may not feel like exercising as much, right? Again, that reduces your caloric expenditure. Another thing that happens, which is one, actually one of the biggest reasons why people either stay at maintenance when they're trying to lose weight or actually gain weight is because they are unable to adhere to those calories, right? They think they're not eating as much, but what happens is they're restricting so much. Say there is probably restricting over the week, eating so little, and then come the weekend, there is this reactive response of overconsumption of calories. So they end up consuming a lot more calories than they think. And what this does is that it undoes all the deficits that they have created over the week. Or what you notice people do is they snack here and there and they forget it. They, they don't track it. They don't realize that all the snacks add up. So the number one reason people don't lose weight when they're trying to is adherence. They're unable to stick to such low calories and they end up snacking here and there and overeating, but they're underestimating that intake, right? Now, what then happens is someone is going to inc increase their calories and they're gonna say, oh, oh I'm, I'm losing weight again. I'm out of starvation mode. Not really, right? What's happened, what possibly happened is number one, you're actually at a calorie intake that you can sustain. You can maintain, you're actually eating food. Right, and because you're eating food, you have more energy. You're able to burn more calories. So you, your, your body is going to naturally increase that need. You're going to start to move more. Your exercises are going to be better. You're going to feel good in general. You, you're not going to have the need to snack. You're not going to have the need to binge of the weekend. From the, you know, because we we do see that like research has shown this diets that are overly restrictive, right? They can cause binging. They can cause overeating in the long run and stuff like that, right? So it's not so much that you, your body gets into this starvation mode and you start storing your calories. You can't store calories that you haven't eaten, right? The only reason is that you're not losing weight or you're even gaining weight is because you're not in a deficit. And reasons could be, like I said, you're either reducing your expenditure because you're not taking in enough or either you're you're overeating, you're underestimating your calorie intake. There's a research where nutritionists and dietitians, right? They were told to, now these are the people who know what they're talking about, right? 
These are the people who are dietitians. They know food, they know nutrition, they know how to track. This is their field. This is their wheelhouse, right? So these people have been told to, to track everything they're eating, right? Everything they're eating and uh, you know the movement that they're doing and all that stuff. Guess what? By the end of the study, um, if I, you know, I haven't got the exact numbers, so I just, just don't want to say things for the sake of it. However, each and every one of them overestimated how much they moved and underestimated how much they're taking in. So we all underestimate how much we're eating. We do it. We don't do it on purpose. We're not saying we're lying to people, but when we tell them that we're not eating as much, it's because that is what we actually believe. It is human nature, right? So these people, they know how to track. This is their work. Yet even those people were able to underestimate how much they're taking in by a huge percentage, huge percentage. Does that make sense? Now, if you feel like you're trying to lose weight. So this is my advice. This is my unsolicited advice. As I've, I've said before, these lives are going to be very general, right? Because different things are going to work for different people, right? So if I don't know you, if I haven't worked with you, I can't really tell you exactly what to do when, because it may not be the right thing for you for various reasons, right? However, this is what I think would be a first good step for you. If you've been trying to lose weight and you feel like it's not happening, you're either stuck at a certain weight or you're gaining weight instead of losing, write down everything you're eating in a day. Right? I'm not asking you to weigh food because I know that can be stressful, but write down every single thing that you're eating in a day as you're using normal nutrition, just, just write it down. Even when you're cooking, right? And that spoon that goes in your mouth to, to, to taste the food, sometimes it's like more than one spoon. We do it, we all do it, all right? We absolutely all do it. The, the kids have some leftovers on the side. You know, we don't wanna throw it, of course, so we put it in our mouth without knowing, yeah, those calories add up. So what you can do is write down everything you're, you're taking in, right? And then by the end of the day, or better yet, record it for yourself for the whole week and have a look if how much you've taken in is what you thought you were taking in and take it from there. Right? That is a good place to start. And also, see how much you move. Record your movement. Or better yet, if you have a stopper. And, and like when I'm training people, my first instinct is how much do you move? Because a lot of people think, oh, I'm exercising for an hour a day. I should be losing weight. No, we don't nearly burn as many calories as we think when we're training, even if you're training seven days a week. Unless you're an athlete who's training for four to hours of a day, every single day, high intensity, then yeah. But if you're an average person like me who just works out an hour a day, you know, three to five times a week, we're not burning as many calories as we think. You know what burns calories? Neat movement, being busy in the day, doing this, doing that. So smart watches, they are your best friend to try and take and track your step counts, right? Smart watches are, you shouldn't rely on them on how many calories you're burning at the gym. Pointless, highly estimated, not real at all. Right, so don't, Believe your smart watches when they tell you, oh, you've burned 800 calories in this hour session. You haven't, <laughs> right? And what, what tends to trip people up is because they have burned 800 calories and now they think, oh, I have, I have more room to eat more now. No, you don't, right? Smart watches are not accurate at all. What they are good for is step count. They are a great way for tracking how much you uh, how much you move in the day. So if you can get a smartwatch, get a smartwatch and start tracking how much you move in the day. That coupled with that food diary, just an idea of how much intake you're having every day will give you a pretty good idea where you're at in terms of your caloric intake and your expenditure, 
And then you can start working out from there if your goal is to lose weight and such that. So to wrap up, you know, I know I said these lives are going to be half an hour, but honestly, they don't need to be half an hour. I'm just going to be talking however long I need to talk. They're going to, they're going to be between 6 p.m. and 6.30, so however long it lasts in between, okay? So number one, starvation mode isn't a thing, right? Physiologically, that doesn't happen. You don't store the calories that you haven't consumed. There is nothing to store. What can happen, though, is we change our behaviors, right? We start to move less, right? We start to snack more. We fail to adhere to those low calories, right? And we end up consuming more calories than we think. So, and this is why for some people upping those calories, they start to see progress again because they can maintain those higher calories because they have more energy to move about. They can exercise better and all those things. Okay, if you like this video, it's been helpful. Please, please, please do leave a comment and let me know because I do want to provide content that is useful to you on here. This is the whole goal of me opening up this group to provide you with content that is actually useful to you that you can actually implement within your own individual health and fitness journeys whatever those may be all right my lovelies i shall talk to you guys soon next week and in between i'm pretty sure I'll come on speak to you guys soon bye